All right, well, welcome everybody to the Library of Things collab. We're all very, very happy to, to see you. We've had a lot of interest. Uh, over 200 people have registered so far uh, to join us for this collab, uh, for all or for part of it. And we're, as I was saying just a moment ago, we're happy to see all of you, those we, that we know and, and so many of you that we've never met before. So thank you for showing up and mm -hmm. for wanting to learn more about what we're doing here. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. There's a handful of the shareable staff are on the call right now. And if you scroll over a picture and you see someone that's got a pizza uh, emoji in their name, you can recognize them as a member of our shareable team. And uh, there's five of us, so it's, you know, relatively easy to identify. Uh, today, we're just going to be kind of going through kind of what this program is going to be looking like. I'm going to introduce you to kind of what we do at Shareable and our larger Solidarity Works program that this Library of Things collab is a part of. Um, we'll kind of go through the syllabus and kind of what people can expect uh, that are participating in the collab. Um, and then we're going to hear from a handful of the presenters that are going to be presenting over the next 12, 12 weeks. Uh, after that, we'll be talking a little bit about um, some of the kind of capacity building micro grants that are going to be available to participants at the end of the collab and have a healthy amount of time for questions um, before we then the second kind of part, which will probably be about the last 15 minutes, we'll be talking about the uh, International Libraries of Things report that is just coming out that we'll be uh, previewing for all of you today. So that's what you can expect over the, the next hour. And I'm going to pass it off to Candice uh, from our team, who's going to tell you a little bit about our organization and uh, Solidarity Works. Thank you so much, Tom. And good evening, good afternoon, and everyone. I'm Candice Favi. Um, just wanted to talk to you for a few moments about Shareable and our mission. Shareable's mission is to empower communities to share for a more resilient resilient, equitable, and joyful world. Since 2009, we've been a leading news and action hub for solidar solidarity economy. We've published over 4,500 articles, 300 how-to guides, and we've advised com countless community organizers, social entrepreneurs, and policymakers on how to harness the power of sharing to improve their communities. In 2022, we saw the need to shift the focus for more intentionally empowering cooperative solutions in local communities. We identified five key values guiding this new work. Solidarity, the belief that we are unstoppable when we unite in purpose and vision. Abundance, the knowledge that we are more than enough and know what we need to flourish. Curiosity, acknowledging that we are stronger, wiser, and more impactful when we listen, dream, and embrace change. Liberation, the notion that none of us are free until we all are free. And celebration, a reminder that radical optimism and joy are fuel for transformative action. From climate change to entrenched systems of oppression to economic instability, the challenges we face can feel, feel daunting. In the face of convergent challenges, we choose chose these five values, solidarity, abundance, curiosity, liberation, and celebration, to God our work. We have seen that everyday people can be meaningful, can meaningfully address our biggest challenges. The sharing movement has shown that we can govern ourselves, build an economy that serves everyone and create meaningful lives together. We know that another world is not just possible, much of it is already here. The result of this new direction is a new program called Solidarity Works. Solidarity Works mobilizes grassroots groups to create tangible projects that build solidarity in their communities. We are doing this through learning and co-action labs that bring together organizers from around the world for training, resources, and support to initiate impactful projects. We launched the Emergency Battery Collab, an eight-week pilot of Solidarity Works model in partnership with the Power People Power Solar Cooperative last July. The collab resulted in a comprehensive public toolkit, 40 organizers trained, and 16 new battery networks formed. 
The Library of Things collab is Shareable's first deep dive collab. Now I'll turn it back to Tom so he can give us more exciting new, new details about our collab launching today. Tom? Thanks for that introduction, Candice. And I realized I did not introduce myself. My name is Tom Llewellyn. I'm the interim executive director at Shareable. Been with the organization for about a decade and previously be cut before coming to Shareable was a co-founder of the Asheville Tool Library in North Carolina. So um, I just want to take a moment to kind of acknowledge a number of the partners that joined us on this ride so far. Many more are, are joining us as we go, but the initial set of partners that, that came together to be to launch this collab, in addition to Shareable, included uh, the Green Lens uh, Tool Library, Circular Community Scotland, My Turn, Center for Biological Diversity, and the South King Tool Library. And from there, we've been bringing on lots more partners and, and many of the, the presenters that are coming on are are coming from new partner organizations on this project. Um, Candice, do you want to just briefly kind of talk about the syllabus and run through the schedule of the collab? Yes, I can do that. Do we want to share our screen or? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and share share the syllabus as you go? One second. All right, can everyone see our course syllabus? You can just give me a thumbs up. All right, good. So when you go into Canvas um, and go to the course Library of Things collab, you'll see everyone who's uh, facilitating this, which is myself, Tom, and Bobby Jones. You'll scroll down and see a beautiful picture from one of our articles. And then we kind of give you a, a overview of our Library of Things. Um, which is a community space for social practice of borrowing and sharing to take place. They hold true to the traditional mechanics of a library while pushing borrowing material to a new edge. Instruments, gardening tools, camping gear, sporting equipment, and more are up for grabs and to be borrowed throughout the community. This will go on for the next 12 weeks and beyond. And um, some of our projects include re research and development, education and support, integration and research improvement, field strengthening, and micro grants. Our objectives of this collab is to convene Library of Thing partners, facilitate the sharing and documentation of be best practices in the field, and provide the basic in education and resources needed to start a Library of Things from the ground up. We provided some outside readings for you all from some of our articles and also kind of the land, lay of the land. And I'll just read that to you. Our lay of the land is learning and expanding our imaginations together through workshops, discussion, and organizing project groups that help us understand and shape both the technical and political aspects of power together. Here's our schedule. We are starting March 5th with how to get started engaging your community. Our next session will take place on March 12th, which is how to get things and what to do with them when you have them. Next, March 19th, operations, legal structure, liability, insurance, and more. Our next session is volunteers, how to attract them, how to train them, and manage and retain them. Next is how to find, acquire, and design. Sorry, I'm hitting buttons. Let me go back. There we go. How to find, acquire, and design a space. I talked to one of our fellows or earlier today about that, and it went really well. Membership, including cost, structures, privileges, perks, and more. Income generation and operational budgeting. How to govern a library of things such as boards, volunteers, and members. Communications such as branding and marketing. Our 10th session will be workshops. We'll talk about classes, events, group work days, and more. Next, going mobile. And then lastly, our last class will be working with and within public libraries, and that'll be on May 21st. 
we will send you an invite to um, Canvas uh, tomorrow, I think. Right, Tom? Yeah, there seems to be a lot of uh, program difficulties today, not only just Eventbrite, but the learning canvas was also having glitches. So um, we'll try to get that invite out. If not by the end of today, the then first thing tomorrow um, as the platforms allow. So to give a, give a taste of what this collab is gonna look like, we have a number of our presenters have come today um, to just kind of talk a couple of minutes and, and share a little bit about who they are, where they're coming from, and what they'll be talking about during uh, the collab. And so, uh, Amanda, I was hoping you could start us off if you want to come off of mute. Oh, not Tracy. Where did you go? I did it. I made it. There I you are. Oh. Almost got it. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, it was a little difficult getting into Eventbrite today, but thank you guys. And I'm glad to see um, some familiar faces and some new faces here. But um, my name is Amanda Miller. I am the executive director of the South King Tool Libraries. I use uh, she, her pronouns. We are in South King County, Washington. Um, we have a pretty strong contingency of tool libraries in the Pacific Northwest region. If you uh, are new to the to the club here, um, and yeah, I'm excited to um, talk and le learn and share um, and inspire, hopefully, uh, folks around the country. And I uh, really appreciate all those that have contributed so much work to um, uh, this report today and all of these programs. So. Um, thank you for letting me participate, and I, um, yeah, I'm really happy uh, to uh, share with you guys next week. I'm kind of waxing between uh, this idea of uh, my presentation will be completely blanked because uh, you've already taken the first step because you want to start a tool library. Uh, Tom's probably not going to be happy about that, so I won't do that probably, but maybe, I don't know. Uh, uh, but then also, I, I'll just have like, you know, something that's completely um you know the specialized to each individual person uh because all the two libraries uh that i've been able to contact and connect with are so unique and different so i'm really excited for this project to keep going thanks tom thanks amanda i think i think your session is going to be a good way for people to really just like learn how to get started right so like what are the first steps how do you talk to people about it how do you find the others build those relationships yeah. um, and and get Maybe the, the ball first moving. and second steps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> yeah. just thinking like the first step is like, you, you want to do this. You've already yep. done it. Great. Session ended. But, you know, maybe the first and second, like what do you do next and where do you go from here? And um, yeah, I I don't know. I'm trying not to get to, to, um, uh, to uh, what are those infomercially about it, uh, but it's really exciting. Um, to to just share some of the, the journeys that we've had too. So I won't spoil anything, but um yeah. Uh, did you want me to go in a little more depth? No, nope, I think that I think that's that I think that's okay. that's okay. enough of a taste. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. All right, next we're gonna hear from Jason. Sounds good. Well let's see if my computer can handle it. Can you hear me? Nope. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, sorry about that. Interesting technology day to day. Um, my name is Jason Allen from Portland, Oregon. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I have been involved with the Greenlands Tool Library in outer Southeast Portland since 2015. Uh, slowly getting involved with communications, space management, inventory, and most recently workshop development within that organization. Greenlands has about 3,000 members, 585 active last year, um, with over 3,000 manual and electric tools, including a handful of kitchen items. I've also been kind of collaborating with, um, Portland is, is unique, I think, among a lot of places. We have 
uh, seven operational and uh, three developing libraries within our fairly small city. Um, so we have boundary things that kind of uh, keep us adding more libraries, which has kind of worked out well for us. Um, but we're kind of collaborating with each other. And so um, I will be bringing in some information from them and their insight into some of these things too. But I will be presenting uh, my experience with different avenues for acquiring tool inventory in sustainable, responsible ways, um, and as a service to the community, as well as refining your selection for portability, longevity, repairability, and safety. Um, we'll also cover some things like loss and damage prevention strategies, material salvage, and responsible disposal. Uh, and I just also wanted to say I'm launching a new library here in a neighboring community of Rockwood, so I'm excited to be here also as a student as well as a peer. So, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Jason, looking forward to your uh, session in a couple of weeks. And uh, next up, we've got Leanna. Hey, everyone. I'm Leanna Frick. I'm the co-director of the Station North Tool Library here in Baltimore. Um, we have been around for 11 years, and I've been here for about eight. Um, we have... Uh, about 2,000 members, about 4,000 tools. We also offer a ton of classes, um, public workshops, and are really excited to be part of this network and to share what we've learned. So I'll be specifically talking about operations, which is part of what I do here. Um, all the nitty gritty about insurance and um, making sure you can keep all that great stuff that Jason helped you find. Um, we'll also be talking about governance. So we... Uh, recently separated from a fiscal sponsor of 10 years, uh, and my background is in nonprofit management. So thinking through all the different ways that you can set up participatory decision making and defining governance roles um, to stay accountable to your communities. And I think we're also going to be participating in the workshop about classes and programming, since that's an area we've grown a lot in. Yeah, so those are three three separate sessions that you'll be either leading or participating in over the course of the next couple of months. months. Thank you, Liana. Uh, and next up, we've got uh, Darren. Hey, all. I'm Darren Cotton with the Tool Library in Buffalo, New York. Uh, so we have been around since 2011. Um, as of May, the Tool Library will officially be a teenager, which is crazy to think about. Um, we've got about 1,400 members, about 4,800 tools in our inventory. We also support repair cafes in our region. Um, and I will be chatting about communications, branding, and marketing. Um, so my background is uh, nonprofit community development, but also graphic design uh, and communication design. So really excited. The Tool Library was honestly one of the first brands that I got to kind of build from the ground up. So a lot of learning along the way um, and hopefully a lot of things that I can share that can help you. Um, and I just really love designing t-shirts and stickers and fun uh, merch like that. So um, yeah, really excited to be included. And I feel like I will also be attending every other session as a learner, so. Um, thanks. Thanks, Darren. And finally, uh, Hazel. Hi, I also am so delighted to be here and see so many faces. Um, thanks for letting me in this cool club. Um, I am here, I was um, the co-founder of the Main Tool Library. Um, in Portland a number of years back. I have nothing to do with it now. That team is awesome and still rocking it. Um, but I'm here today representing actually a public library, um, which is Curtis Memorial Library um, on the coast of Maine. And we have about 600 things. So the what I will be chatting about is how to either start a library of things at a public library, how to work with amazing, amazing tool libraries, um, to run programming and or how to potentially even come up with lending agreements between public libraries and um, tool libraries, because I think we need all of those things in our future and, and a few more things beside. But um, I'm really excited to go to all of your folks' um, events and learn a bunch myself. So uh, go team. 
Yeah, thanks, Hazel. And again, thank you to all of our, our presenters, those that have just uh, given a little teaser, but also the many other presenters that will be joining us along the way over the next 12 weeks for the collab. Um, we're going to have some time for some questions about the collab in a moment. But before we do that, I want to pass it over to, to Bobby to kind of talk about some of the kind of capacity building micro grants that are going to be available to participants, uh, to select participants at the end of the program. Hey, y'all, like Tom said, um, I'm Bobby Jones. I'm Shareable's development director. Um, so a lot of you know, and some of you are already a part of um, the fellowship that kind of goes along with this collab. So we, this collab um, has a much bigger piece of it that includes fellows in cities um, who are starting brand new tool libraries. And they're gonna be going through this process for a while. But we wanted to also be able to offer something to support already existing tool libraries. And so one of those ways that we're supporting folks who already have an existing tool library and are going through this collab, participating, and want to really take it to the next level is um, capacity building gr micro grants. So, um, and we're calling these capacity building grants both because um, the goal of these grants is to build capacity for the for your individual library of things, but also build capacity for this community of library of things practitioners, of the folks participating in the collab. So, um, you know, we're asking you to actively participate. And then the last um, session at the end of May, we'll be releasing applications. Um, we'll probably be reviewing in June and then distributing funds in July. Um, we have a pool of at least $10,000 for micro grants. Um, we're going to be kind of responsive to the needs of the folks who are really participating in the collab. So there'll probably be some like questionnaires and asking people what your needs are, what kind of ideas you have, and then hopefully a really simple application process to make this as quick and easy and painless as possible to get your ideas in for um, really cool micro grants and really cool projects to take your LOT to the next level. All right. Well, that was just a lot. We just gave you kind of 20, 20 plus minutes of just straight boom, boom, boom. Uh, for those of you who are joining us late uh, because of the Eventbrite snafu, thank you for working through that and, and joining us, uh, you know, making, making your way in one way or the other. Um, there's, and we still have a number of people that are, that are getting in and contacting us that they were having trouble. So um the of the 70 or so people here, you're representative of the more than 200 that have uh, registered for this collab and will be joining us for all or part of these sessions. Um, and now that we've kind of gone through, gone through the the syllabus, the looked at the schedule, heard from some of the speakers and talked about some of the other opportunities that are coming out as a part of this collab. In addition to the micro grants, we're also going to be pulling together all of the um, kind of workshops and all the resources related to those workshops and putting together a comprehensive toolbox to support folks to to build out or again to again to expand um improve their their overall kind of capacity of the field of libraries of things and that will be put together over the course of the course and will come out in the summer i'm wondering if there's any questions if anybody wants to raise your hand to speak up or put a feel free to put a question in the in the chat We got a question from Cami. If folks miss this orientation, can you still participate in the collab? Um, Absolutely. That, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, Bobby, I talked over you. Yes, that is definitely the answer. I think. So we're going to be, uh, especially since we we've had um, so much uh, trouble today with Eventbrite. Um, we were already planning on this, but we're going to be. Uh, grabbing the recording, kind of cleaning up the recording and sharing it out tomorrow 
with everybody who registered for the Eventbrite um, for this session today. And you're welcome to share that with other with other folks. And, and then if you have other people that would like to join that need an invitation to join the collab, um, you can go ahead and send an email to Candice at shareable.net. And Candice, if you want to just go ahead and throw your email address in there. Candice is going to be the kind of day-to-day -day program manager for the collab. So as, um, you know, collab questions come up uh, about, you know, any issues with, with attending or finding resources or uh, questions about how to use uh, Canvas, which is the, uh, the learning uh, module system that we're going to be a learning management system that we're going to be using for the course. Candice will be your go-to contact uh, for everything related to that. And uh, to be, and yeah, and with, I'm, I'm seeing a question just came to me directly in the chat asking if um, there was any cost for participating in this. This is a totally free course. And not only is it a free course, we've designed this to be more of like an open collab. So you can pop in and pop out as is convenient for you. If you're able to, we you know highly recommend that people try to make the live sessions so you can engage with the with the topic matter. But it we're going to be posting all of the recordings um, within 24 hours to Canvas uh, to our learning system. And we'll also be translating, we'll be putting forth the transcripts for those trainings, and we'll be translating them into Spanish and making the, the Spanish translations available within a week of each session. And so it's entirely free to participate however you want to show up. Um, but as Bobby was mentioning a little bit, you know, the the capacity grants at the end, which another question came up, you know, how how large these grants are going to be. Right now, we've got a total pool of, of a total pool for the grants of ten thousand dollars. So we're these are going to be smaller micro grants, most likely not more than a thousand dollars. We're working on gaining extra funds, and also if any of y'all have uh, contacts or know any funders that might be, you know, either individuals or institutional funders that would be uh, willing or to to learn more about this and potentially support this work, um, clearly we're going to have more need than we are going to have resources to provide at this point in time, and so we'd also push it back to all of you to help us kind of crowdsource that support to be able to make this work. Tom, I did get a question from Angela from England. She wanted to know, is the UK office engaging with local libraries of things over there? Um, well, Emma, are you still on here? Sorry. Yeah, hey, you are, <laughs> Emma. <laughs> You want to just introduce yourself and and uh, and then that question was wondering if um, it's the UK is engaging with library library of things. Are you asking? And I guess I wasn't sure. Um, if, or, yep. Go. Yep. Go ahead. That question was from England, wasn't it? Yeah, I know you're in Scotland, but wondering if there is. Yeah, yeah, that was that was from yeah, England, yeah. but wondering if you um, have. So I work with the Student Repair yeah. Network, in Scotland. Yeah. And um, so there's 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 an it's a bit it's a bit messy. So there's a bit of a, there's a sharing library. I can't even remember to be honest. I'm on that leave and my brain is not in it. Um, but there was a network for sharing libraries, which has kind of changed because there's networking wheels. There's a network in Scotland and there's very few in Northern Ireland. So it's kind of in a bit of a last time I was aware of it. And Claire, I think you'd be the best person to talk to speak to this. Last time I was aware of it, there was a bit of a murky not knowing what was happening. So. Claire, maybe you could update everyone, if you know. Oh yeah, just say in the UK, yes, there is no uh, one thing. And um, I've been spreading the word about this collab to UK people, um, just so that more people know, because we are constantly getting asked, uh, you know, the ones that exist, how do we do it? So we've sent some guys your way. I'll connect with Angela as well, if I. Thank and I've both. got a yeah. few direct messages about will this recording be sent out? And we are sending it out tomorrow. Yeah. To kind of get to that question, Tom, do you want to talk about, or I can talk about if you want me to, a little bit more about 
the toolkit that's going to come out of this collab and kind of what all that could potentially look like? Yeah, so as Candice was mentioning earlier uh, in the kind of presentation about Shareable and our work uh, with Solidarity Works, um, we this is our second collab and 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 Shareable's kind of pivoting basically our work, right? So we've been most known for our publishing work, you know, over the past uh, nearly now 15 years, you know, having published nearly 4,500 stories about the ways that people are sharing resources around the world, uh, over 300 how-to guides to um, support groups to, to replicate and adapt um, sharing initiatives in their, in their own communities. And in the last couple of years, we've made the strategic decision to dial back our publishing and really lean into the work to not only just inspire people, but to and support them to, to uh, build projects and to expand their projects in their communities. So this is the second collab. The first collab we did last summer, which was the Emergency Battery Network. And from that, we created a comprehensive um, toolkit, which included um, kind of all of the kind of graphic notes from every presentation, um, kind of key points that, that came out of, of each workshop, um, lists, you know, supportive resources. And then we edited all of the presentations and workshops down into smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. So you could basically have a, 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 a course that you could follow the, that would be like a self-paced course. So we're planning on doing the exact same thing with this collab. So again, that this will be later in the summer that we'll be able to pull all these resources together um, and then bring in examples of membership agreements, um, spreadsheets for, for keeping track of items and, and um, you know, legal documents, like all of the different uh, kind of components that somebody would need if they were trying to get started, right? So it's the, um, how, what is the basic education and resources needed to start a library of things from the ground up? We'll be going through that as a group in real time. And then based on um, the participants, the, the participants in this collab, will then be adapting the resources. So we'll be kind of testing certain things that we think are semi-universal or maybe will you know, require small amounts of adaptation. And then we'll also find other things that are hyper-local that maybe don't make sense to go into a larger kind of general toolkit. So that's kind of the intention coming out of this as a secondary resource is that anybody can use into perpetuity whether they sign up for this course or not, if there's a specific ask, like one workshop that you want to share with other folks from your library of things or, you know, new volunteers, it'll be really easy to do just that. And also all of our resources at Shareable are published with, with a Creative Commons uh, license, which uh, means they're available for anybody to edit, adapt, remix, and use however is useful to you. Any other burning burning questions? Well, I think then, so we said our first session is next week. It's gonna be at the same time. All sessions are gonna be um, at, at this time on Tuesdays for the next 12 weeks. We're sorry for those that are joining us uh, pretty late in, in Europe and so glad to have you here. We were trying to balance the time zones with also folks in, in Oceania. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a, of a mix. And, and as we, we said, we'll be giving out all the recordings. So if there's a late night that doesn't work for you, you'll still be able to get the resources there. Um, so the question is, oh. by participating today, are you in the, in the collab? We are going to be sending out invitations to join the learning management system to everybody who registered for today's session, whether they made it here today or not. And once you're signed in and within that system, you'll have access to the links to every single workshop um, as they come up. And there's um, a function for uh, discussions. We're going to be putting up resources that are for the, the trainings in those spaces. That's 
also on that learning management system is where we're going to be putting up the the transcripts and the recordings and and the the, the translations of the transcripts. So um, everything will be in a centralized location. Um, and again, you'll be able to pick and choose which sessions you want to join live. Um, Yeah, loving some of these things in the in the uh, in the chat. Bill, definitely want to talk to you about strategy maps, um, and happy to have you showing up for this and being able to bring that capacity into this group. Um, I do have one more question, Tom. Yeah, before yeah. You. Um, this is from Pamela. She's asking: Are the presenters going to discuss how to enroll city leadership to support library or things with building resources, land, etc.? Amanda, do you want to just touch on that real quick? Did you hear that question? So we are going to have a session which is focused on um, on kind of the like on partnerships and uh, and related to kind of in income generation and uh, how we how to bring in institutional partnerships to be able to support that. Um, that's also going to be integrated in a little bit, uh, touched on in our first session next week, um, because I know that's something that Amanda Miller, who was the first uh, presenter who talked to us today and will be leading our first session is very passionate about. So we have a second component to the session, as I mentioned earlier this, uh, I have to say earlier this morning, but uh, when we got started 40 minutes ago, we talked about how we we're going to be going to the collab to begin with. And then uh, the second part of this uh, session, we wanted to share the um, State of Library of Things uh, 2024 report that we've been working on for the last almost a year now, we, we kind of drug our feet on on pulling it all together towards the end, but we decided we wanted to kind of release it uh, corresponding with the beginning of this course. So um, last year, we conducted a survey of about 82 existing libraries of things with the idea that we wanted to kind of gain a better understanding of the field and also to identify a set of industry benchmarks, right? Like where, like what are what are the typical, you know, if there is such a thing, library of things, what can be expected? You know, how many members do people have? How many items? What size spaces? Um, you know, how are people getting insurance? Um, what are the demographics of of memberships? You know, what are budgets? Like, what does it actually look like and take to to run a library of things um, in in 2023, and and so as I mentioned, we had 82 different library of things respond to our survey um, from 11 different countries, and it included respondents, uh, you know, either kind of directors or volunteers, uh, staff, you know, board members, living in the, uh, of library of things based in the United States, Canada. Europe and Oceania. So definitely limited in scope, um, you know, English speaking primarily um, countries. And so that's a, a limiting factor. And, you know, while um, the report, you know, reflects the experiences of our survey respondents, uh, future iterations of a survey like this to, to really be able to capture the experience of the global library of thing community will need to have you know far more participation to be representative of now now over two thousand formalized libraries of things. So um, rather than go through piece by piece and and give the kind of cliff notes of what the report is, we're also as I mentioned we're gonna we're gonna share the um, the the collab registration everything tomorrow. We'd also hope to have the. The report all finished and there was a technical glitch in, in getting it up. So we're going to have to share that tomorrow also. It's just one of those days. Um, but I'm going to pass it to, to Paige, who is a co-author of the report and has been putting it all together to kind of just talk through a couple of the, the key takeaways from the report. Yes. Hey, y'all. I'm Paige. I'm Shareable's communications manager. 
So let me share my screen so we can get a nice preview. Okay, can people see my screen for the Acrobat? Cool. Um, so yeah, this is a cover of our Library of Things uh, 2024 report. Um, so these are the different uh, sections of it, but as you'll see, that we cover a lot of different things in the results and the survey. Um, and our introduction, a little map, but our key takeaways, of course, are that libraries of things are unique and they look different in every community. Um, and we you know with just a handful of volunteers in a small space, uh, LOTs are making big differences in their communities. And generally, there are three different types of LOTs. Um, the vast majority of them are volunteer run, budgets less than 10,000 a year, and have limited um, inventory and average memberships of less than 200 people. There's also larger independent LOTs with store funds, annual budgets that are pretty large, and at least one paid um, staff member. And there's all, thirdly, there's the municipal LOTs that are connected to city libraries, um, including standalone dedicated um, LOTs or collections within uh, normal libraries. And unsurprisingly, I'm sure to most people, the volunteers are absolutely critical to the success, to the success of most LOTs, LOTs. We also found especially for inventory maintenance. Um, and many kind of, uh, again, many LOTs are small with limited usage items um, lent out per month. And for LOTs are very reliant on membership fees, grants, and donations for their financial uh, sustainability. Um, we also found that many LOTs have never conducted a formal needs assessment um, to determine what their current and potential user base uh, is and wants and needs for their LOT. And many LOTs have been operating um, for less than five years, are only open one to three days a week, and and when they have when they have limited when they have capacity. So there's a lot of LOTs have limited hours. Um, and what's also really interesting to see is how many other services LOTs provide to their communities, um, from repair cafes, maker spaces, just being a really great community hub. And lastly, many LOTs were unsure of the racial, gender, income, and employment status of their members. Um, and so, so we think that surveying LOT membership um, can really help inform efforts to increase diversity and intentional decision-making. Um, so yeah, those are the main takeaways and I'm dropping in the chat just the different sections that uh, the L the report covers, but looking forward to sending it out to everyone tomorrow and so you can all take a look. Thanks for running through that that page. And, you know, in addition to being a, a tool for kind of benchmarking uh, your own library of things to the field, we were also seeing this as an important piece of information when it comes to fundraising, right? So being able to communicate about um, what the larger field is, how your project fits within it, um, to learn about some of the other ways that that libraries of things are, that existing libraries of things are, are supporting and impacting their communities and being able to draw some of that stuff back and integrate it into your work. Um, as we mentioned, this really was the, the first kind of larger scale Library of Things survey. Um, and our intention is to uh, support the development of, of future surveys like this. And, and as I mentioned, hoping that they, you know, really design them to be, uh, you know, I think one, one miss that we had, and, and that's a mea culpa on our part, is that we didn't translate it at all, right? And so there was no opportunity really to reach uh, other libraries of things globally that aren't in uh, English primarily speaking countries. And and so that was a huge uh, piece of the the global picture that that is missed. And so future libraries of things, I think we'll, we'll have to figure out how to correct for that and, and make it as uh, accessible as possible. Um, one thing that we are also um, willing to do for people that want to do uh, some additional um, kind of sorting and looking at data and, and uh, want to dive deeper into this is that for participants that are interested, if you want to just go ahead and, and get in touch with us again, writing to Candace is the best way, um, is that we'll be willing to um, share an anomalized version of 
the data. So we'll move the remove the names and the contact information and the specific locations for where the data came from, but then you'll be able to get the spreadsheet and you can um, look throughout it to be able to, to see, you know, if there's other trends or stuff like that that you're specifically interested in. And we feel like that will especially be helpful when it comes to doing fundraising and trying to identify, again, where your library of things kind of fits in with the larger field. Are there any questions about the, the report? When and how soon, Steve? Kate. <laughs> Steve, uh, it should be out. It will. We'll send it out tomorrow. So again, we'll we'll email it to everybody who registered for um, this session. We thought we we're going to have it up right now, and it's just not. It didn't load correctly up on our website before we, so we could get the link and get it out. But it's coming. Yeah, thanks, Rob. All right. Well, oh, um, instances of tool libraries in rural areas, not very many formalized tool libraries in, in rural areas. I will say, and this was not um, represented in the um, by those who responded to our survey, but I know just from knowledge of the field that there are a lot of um less formalized and formalized um uh farm equipment uh libraries of things uh specifically in rural areas and and um they have existed for a very very long time when we talk about kind of libraries of things we're often talking about the the kind of more modern formalized libraries of things um with the i think the longest tenured longest running current uh tool library is uh, part of the Berkeley, California Public Library. And that started, I think, in 1978. So they've been around for a while. Um, one thing you'll see in the, the report, and I think, Paige, you may have mentioned that, is that the majority, the vast majority of, of respondents to our survey, and I think this is representative um, of libraries of things, have started within the last 10 years uh, internationally. So this is, this is a field that is rapidly growing. And, uh, you know, one, because of interest, um, two, because of need, and three, because of technology and making it easier to manage inventories and memberships and keep track of everything. And so that, that speaks to, I think, some of the key uh, drivers of, um, I would say, this kind of, you know, pretty significant rise of libraries of things. Um, and... I want to step back and once again mention that this is the more formalized, right? And it's very easily it's very easy to get enamored um, with the formal and lose sight of the informal. And informal resource sharing, you know, I you know, community-based libraries have been again along around like forever since we've had communities, right? We've shared resources and. Um, and so I, it's it's always important to recognize, I'd say the the total the aggregate impact of those informalized systems are much larger than the aggregate impact of our formalized systems, and so making sure to credit the those communities that are really doing the work. All right. Well, I'm feeling unless there's any last minute questions that are coming in, I am just want to wrap up and, and let everybody know once again how grateful we are for you to show up. We've been building this thing for over the last year, and it, it definitely warms our hearts and pushes us forward to um, see so much interest in this in this work and to see so many faces from within this community. Uh, there's uh, like I mentioned, a number of, of, of people that are joining, that joined today are going to be speaking that, that didn't, during the collab, that didn't get an opportunity to, to speak. And, uh, and also, as our speakers all mentioned, they're also very interested in participants, right? So this is a collaboratory. We are doing this, this work together, and uh, everybody will get 
the most out of it through engaging with with this material, right? Engaging during the workshops when they're happening live, engaging with the discussion questions uh, on Canvas, and sharing resources uh, back and forth, not waiting until we get to a session about communications to share resources related to those. And so we'll be able to start grabbing things for each one of our topics um, as, as we're going. And so those conversations are that much richer when we get to them. So we look forward to seeing uh, you all next week. And again, if you have any questions uh, throughout this time, if you have any trouble, if you don't get an invitation by, to Canvas by the end of the day tomorrow, if you don't notice that the, the report has been sent to you by the end of the day tomorrow, please reach out to Candice, Candice at, at shareable.net. And we want to, and Candice will be there to support you to, to make sure you're able to uh, get in and participate. All right. Have a lovely, lovely uh, afternoon, evening, morning for those of you in Oceania, and, and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Thank Bye. You, <laughs> Thank you, Tom.